Now, the thing is, guys, uh, all of you are senior people person over here, right? We don't have any fresher. We don't have any, uh, you know, CL6. I don't think we have any CL6 as well. Now, uh, we'll discuss a lot of things that you already know, right? But uh, for you guys uh, who already know something, it's going to be a refresher, okay? Second, you're also going to probably a cup, uh, get a chance to think in a different way, right? Or uh, at the same time, I don't have magic pill that I can give you. And okay, after you, uh, you know, like this, you know, pop this pill, you will be expert in debugging. No, it's not gonna be like that. Just that it's gonna be a refresher session for people who already know this thing, and people, uh, a few of you who are not aware of the things, it's gonna be something new. But you have to practice it day in and day out, and that is how you, you know, gain expertise. Now, before we start. Let me tell you something. The debugging process actually starts before you actually code, right? And you have to own it. What do you mean by that? Okay. Now, a lot of time I see developer complaining, okay, no, this is not my fault. No, this is working on my system. No, no, there must be some situation uh, which I, you know, uh, this situation is not given to me. Uh, this scenario was not given to me. Tester reused some wrong data, all those things. Uh, you know, I, I see a lot of developer complaining about those things. So to uh, listen to me carefully, and this is something I really mean it. As a developer, your code is your kid, your child, right? You cannot say it's not my fault or it's working on my PC because ultimately you are not trying to build the product for your own PC. You are going; to, uh, it's going to be deployed on a server, right? So it should work server. as long as it's not working on the server, it's of no use. So you have to stop complaining uh, like this thing. The second thing which uh, Rarely, I see in some developer like uh, they say, "I'm a developer. My job is to just code." Now, tester, his uh, her job is to find bugs, and it's okay if they can find bugs. Uh, trust me, if uh, you are a true blood developer, you will feel ashamed when a tester find a bug. Okay, so just it's it's about the mindset. If you own the code, if you own the piece of code, uh, you will avoid a lot of bugs. Forget debugging. Being said that, we all know that bugs are something we cannot avoid, right? Uh, there will be bugs. Okay, no system is foolproof. There will be scenario, there will be, sometimes it's not your fault, sometimes the server, sometimes uh, the environment, or sometimes uh, you actually miss something, right? So bugs will be there. Just that you have to opportunity you now, way where you can actually you know, just dive into it and fix it. Okay. Second, like I said, it's not about uh, just debugging, it's beyond that. The time we are coding, you also have to keep something in mind. Like all of us have about this, right? Prevention is better than? Prevention is better than? Cure. Cure, cure right? So if you can prevent something, it's always better to you know prevent something rather than just you know, fixing bugs. So what other thing you can do? First, proper coding standard. If you're following the proper question, it's going to be really you can avoid a lot of bugs first, and uh, even if there is a bug, it's going to be easier for you to debug that first. Second, logs. Okay. Now this is something uh, you know a bit tricky. All of us know what what the logs, right? We are using it, but uh, are we using it properly? Okay, can somebody tell me what are the levels of log we have? Anyone, please. Uh, Anshuman, can you repeat your question, please? Okay, guys, am I audible clearly to all of you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Earlier, like, there were some gaps. Okay, so please, please let me know if you are not able to hear me. Otherwise, I will go or something like that. So my question was, we all use logs. Okay, can somebody tell me what are the levels of log we have in PHP? One thing we have Anyone. is Laravel lab log. Uh, okay. I'm talking about the levels of log. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll give you a clue. Like you have debug, info, right? Warn, critical, right? So that is a hierarchy of logs we have. Remember now? 
okay now these are similar to types of errors you can say types of errors you can say okay yeah, right so when you are using log you have to be very careful that you are using the right kind of log putting everything as debug or putting everything as info will not help you okay now again uh, logs are very good to debug or identify the issue at the same time they are actually evil when it comes to server okay because every time you are writing in the file system so you don't want to write everything every time all the time okay so you have to be very careful while using logs but you should use logs and use the right type of log wherever required okay and the beauty of this thing is you can actually set the default log type okay let's say for example you are using debug you are using info and you are using warn and error okay i'm just giving an example of just four okay now the hierarchy is uh, the lowest one is debug then info then warn and then error okay so basically there are some eight kind of uh, eight types of logs i'm just giving four example if you enable only for error debug at info and warn those thing will not be logged so that will save a lot of file io okay and when there is a bug okay you want to turn on the debug log okay so that you can get everything okay that will impact the performance but it's going to be easier for you to find issue am i clear so far yes okay cool the thing, second uh, third thing is comments now doesn't matter how good a coder you are if there is someone who's new to that project or the, to that code it's going to be difficult for that person to understand what we have done and why we have done that right so some good practice would be you know put the ticket id and a small description why you are doing this thing okay so uh, if you fix something just put okay fix for this particular issue right so if next time somebody comes to or maybe even you after a couple of uh, months you come to that piece of code you know what exactly you have done and why you have done that okay and the fourth one is again validating input most of the bug comes if you are not validating them okay most of the times okay let's say for example file upload okay and uh, somebody uh, is a functionality to upload the image file and somebody uploaded a, a some executable file okay uh, that will break the system because you are trying to load a executable file uh, as a image okay so it's always you know good to validate the system uh, okay never trust the users okay that's that's the thumb rule never trust the users they'll do all the goofs okay am i clear so far now coming to uh, the entire thing okay debugging that basically uh, four steps the first thing you want to identify the bug second rca that is root cause analysis third impact analysis ia and finally you want to fix the bug okay now a lot of time what happen uh, when a developer get a bug they just jump into it try to fix it and in that process i don't want i i don't need to tell you what happened next right you fix one bug and uh, you get four more reopens right we don't want to get into that scenario so the other steps i want you to follow identify of the rca of the ia that is impact analysis and then fix the bug okay now how will you for how this thing if it's not broken don't fix it if it's not broken don't fix it okay so a lot of time what happens is uh, you get a bug it is not actually a bug it's a feature okay and uh, recently i uh, heard this kind of scenario in one of the project uh, it was a feature uh, the tester raised a bug for this and uh, this guy fixed it Uh, assuming that is a bug, and then again uh, there was a reopen. Okay, no, no, this was not a bug; it was a feature. Then he had to again reverse. Okay, so don't just jump into it. First, make sure that it's a bug. Then only go for the fix. Okay. Tools you need, you need an ID. Uh, most of us are using uh, VS Code, right? 
right? Uh, any yes. ID you can use for that matter, or you can use VS Code, you can use Eclipse, right? Uh, so over there, you have a debug functionality. So you can set, uh, you know, this, uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, check mark, book mark. I, I forgot the term, term right? Uh, breakpoints, right? You can set the breakpoints and you can see the flow, uh, how the control is flowing, how, what is the uh, value of the variables, everything. So you need the ID. Second, obviously, you need a browser to check uh, which are not of the PHP side thing, something which is based in Java, JavaScript, for example, or the HTML, right? Uh, in the browser. And obviously, log is the best. Right. Clear so far? Yes. Now, uh, coming to types of error, okay, types of bugs, basically. Broadly, there are three types of error, or three types of bug. The easiest one to fix is syntax error. Okay. So let's say, for example, you missed a uh, semicolon or, or uh, you used uh, some other expression for that matter, or, 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 no, or, or the, you know, some typo. Okay. That is easy to fix. Most of the ID, they'll tell you right there, there okay, that's okay. Uh, there's an issue, fix it. Okay. So that's, that's not something we want to discuss right now. The second is runtime error. Okay. Now, uh, this is like uh, exception, you can say. Okay. And the third is, and third one is the most difficult one to catch, that is the logical error. Okay. Uh, to give an example, if you want to compare two uh, variable, okay, and you are using uh, variable one equals, uh, if variable one equals variable B, okay, that's a logical error. And these kind of bugs are actually difficult to find. Or maybe uh, you didn't understood the requirement and you code in a different way. Then you realize, okay, no, this is not what it should be. You're getting the different output. Okay. So those uh, kind of things are the most difficult one to catch. That is logical error. Any queries so far before you move ahead? Any queries? Anyone? We are good? Okay. I'm going a bit faster because uh, I have to cover a lot of things. If uh, you think that I have to stop, I have to explain something, please stop me there. Now, again, we, I, we discussed before, right? Don't assume you need to validate. Now, how do you validate? Okay. And what are things you don't validate? Right? Now, I, before I explain with this thing, I want you guys to tell me. You're on mute. Anshuman, you're on mute. My bad. My bad. Okay. So uh, before you go ahead, I, I want to ask you guys, okay? You have been coding, you have been debugging. So what are kind of thing uh, you encounter most where there's an issue? Uh, also, your screen has not shared. Yeah, I know. I've stopped that. I, I've stopped okay. that. I, just, okay. I'm just asking you guys before I uh, go ahead. What are the scenario? Or where do you find uh, a mistake which gives rise to a bug? Uh, most of the time, logical or logical things. Logical, yes. Is syntax any... as well. Syntax, most of the time, you fix it before you, you know, or yes, correct. It, right? correct. So, logical. So, what happens is uh, either the values that you're passing are not correct or the flow is not correct, the control is not correct, or, or the queries that you're firing, they're not correct, right? So you want to make sure you're checking these things while you're debugging, right? So, and you don't need to, and you shouldn't, assume that things are good, okay? And that is the reason there's the, so. You want to make sure the values that you're expecting are actually there in the variable, first. Second, the queries that you're firing are right. Third, the control flow, okay, is correct, okay. Now, the different way to do it, like we say breakpoint, but in the server, you can't have breakpoint, right? For that, you have to log it. 
and if you're using Laravel, like uh, it's pretty easy to you know uh, even turn the SQL query to you know the plain statement and print. Uh, I think there's something called two SQL or something, right? So I wanted to use this thing while you debug something to ensure that the value that you're expecting is passing properly. So far, so good. Next comes the RC, okay, root coexistence. Now, there's one thing is like, you know, fixing a bug, okay, there's a bug, you just fix it. But uh, it's like, if you want to win a match or if you want to knock out someone, you can deliver jabs, right? You want to go for a probably a hook punch or maybe a uppercut something or maybe a roundhouse, okay? That's the way you knock someone out. Similarly, we just fix that particular bug. It doesn't guarantee that uh, they will not, uh, there won't be any other bugs. So you want to find the root cause, okay? And that is pretty simple. For that, you just need the power of Y's added with 5W and 1H, okay? Now, uh, how many of you know about 5W and 1H? Yeah, Prasun, please. Yeah, this is uh, five wise uh, diagram technique. Means uh, uh, the, the name suggested this five wise, but we can continue it uh, with seven layer and eight layer as well. Means first layer, uh, suppose for example, there is one uh, why the uh, screen ticket is get spillover. So maybe first step. Mean, means there is five or uh, five steps. Means first steps you need that your uh, ticket is get spillover. Second step, suppose that uh, the estimation is not perfectly done. Third step is like the client communication is not proper. Fourth step is like that. Uh, some this is one example. Like that way you can step down your root cause analysis from higher level to lower level. Means okay. five. So like that, but five means not five. You can use seven layer, eight layer. Anything. You're talking about five wise, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I my question was about five W and one H. I would like to answer. Yeah, they do. The five W is who, where, what, and uh, when and where, and H for how. how. It's the way of asking the question. Right. So uh, here's something called the power of why. Right. So uh, there's a book, uh, Start With Why. Uh, if you haven't read it, please read it after the, whenever you get time, whatever. Uh, so to find the solution, you have to ask question. Okay, like Prasun said, the power of Y's is not just five Y's. Okay, you can ask as many Y's as possible. Okay, plus not just Y, the other W's and H's. Okay, when this bug occurs, how did this bug occur? Why this occurred? What is the scenario uh, which, you know, who are the culprits, right? You want to ask all these questions. And the more question you ask, the more clarity you'll get. And that is how you find the root cause. Okay. Any, any uh, query so far? No? No. Okay, good. You guys are really awesome. Because I'm really going fast, but you have no queries. Good. <laughs> okay. Now moving to IA. Okay. Like I said, uh, you must have heard me say this a lot of time. Don't be penny wise. Okay. Uh, we already discussed it. Don't just jump in to solve a bug. Make sure that is not impacting other features. And and for that, again, you need three things. And you guys have heard me saying this a lot of time. Right. The requirement document. The LLD, that is a low level design. And third, the dependency matrix. Okay. Now, uh, all of you are aware of the RSD, the requirement document, and the LLD. Can somebody explain what is the dependency matrix? Prithi. Anyone? Okay. Nimay, you're saying something, right? Basically, I want to say that dependency with each module is another module. Yeah, right. So for that, it's, it's pretty simple. Okay, and uh, you can't derive it directly. 
for that you need to go through the LLD as well as the RST. Okay. And uh, what eventually you want to do is you want to get a matrix. Simple. You can open an Excel sheet. You'll have to list every feature in the Y column and the same thing in the X uh, coordinate, right? So in one column, let's say for example, A, B, C, D, you want to list all the features. Again, one, two, three, four, list all the features. And when there is a dependency, you just mark that trend or any color for that matter. Right? That means if there is a change in this particular feature, this will impact this, this, this and this feature. Clear? Any queries? No? Awesome. So that is what you want to do. The tools. Okay. Move, moving ahead. Now again, there are three steps. Okay. Identify, estimate, and treat. Okay. Now, we just discussed uh, the identification thing, right? You want to create this matrix and you want to uh, understand this fix will have impact on these, these things, okay? That's the first thing. Second is the estimate, okay? Now, if there's something which is uh, gonna cause a lot of rework, okay? It's always better to stand up and talk to, uh, you know, the concerned person, the stakeholder saying, okay, uh, though it looks like a simple fix of maybe uh, half a day, but uh, this fix will actually cause this, this, this issue and to fix everything, we'll need X amount of time. Okay, rather than just fixing that bug. Okay. So that is estimate. So you estimate, uh, okay, uh, if I want to fix this particular issue, the other impacts, and I need X amount of time. After that, you want to report. Report it as you want to present it to the, uh, or convey it to the, uh, whoever it is, maybe the tester, then maybe the uh, PA, maybe the PMPD, whoever, I mean, who, who the concerned person is, right? You want to discuss this thing with them, and then, and if they're like, okay, fine, let's do it. It fits in the budget, it fits in the time frame, whatever, then do it. Don't take, uh, you know, uh, what, what I say. Okay, let me fix this thing and baad mein dekha jayega. if there is some reopen, I will fix it. Don't take that one. Okay, so that is something I would like to request. Any queries so far? No? Perfect then. We are done in half an hour. Now, any queries, you have any question, anything you want to discuss, you can discuss. I'm done from my side. I wanted to finish it by three o'clock, but uh, yeah. Speed up, Kia. Which other speed up, Shaz? But uh, if you have any query, you can ask me. Otherwise, I'll ask you queries. Yeah, Rajesh, please. Yeah, here report means uh, should we report uh, some documents and documentation something or uh, should we do and fix the issue? It depends. It depends. So, for example, if uh, it is not impacting a lot of things and you can, uh, you know that. Because, uh, because sometimes we have to report uh, this box to somewhere. It, if it is dependency or if it is the product box, then we have to also report these things to the uh, higher authority or whatever. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. So that's what I'm telling you. So uh, it all depends on the impact, right? If uh, okay. you know that it's, it's not impacting a lot of things and uh, okay, you thought it will uh, take half a day, but you can do it in one day mm. or slightly, you know, uh, exceeding the time limit with what uh, you had in mind. It's okay. You can fix it. No one will stop you. But if there is a you know, big gap, okay, mm. if there's a half a day, uh, you know, you thought it's gonna take half a day, but it's taking a week because there are a lot of features or more modules which are going to impact it. We impact it. It's always better to just raise this concern. Okay, if I fix this particular issue, these things will be impacted, and that uh, going to fix everything. It's gonna take X amount of time. Okay, get uh, out and then only work on that. No. Okay. One general question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes we do some fixes on the server or maybe on the code level. So at that time we are trying to fix uh, and uh, uh, we thought okay it will take uh, half an hour maybe the one hour and uh, we also continue and it, it, it is not fixing in uh, one hour then what should we consider for next should we continue debugging more or should we I, 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 I didn't get I didn't get the question okay let me try to reframe what you said uh, 
your initial estimation of fixing a bug was lesser than the actual time that you're getting, you know, uh, we are going to invest. That's what your uh, question is? Uh, no, no, actually, uh, I don't know what will, uh, uh, how much time it will take to fix. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and uh, I thought, uh, okay, uh, this will take uh, one hour job. Okay, in one hour, this should be the fix. Mm -hmm. But when we do, uh, when we try to fix it or when we try to debug it, and then we realize, oh, this is not possible in these things. And uh, if we uh, initially thought, okay, this is the possible, then it will take one or two hours. But when we actually do the work, then it will not complete in the specific criteria, in specific yeah. time frame. Yeah. So should we continue debugging or should we wait or should we add, uh, get another estimate? Uh, okay. Fine. So, uh, okay, this is not in the context of this particular session, but uh, in general, I would say, uh, no, I'll answer this question. The thing is, uh, let's say, for example, you said it will get fixed in one hour, okay, or mm -hmm. maybe one day. Don't wait till the end of the day. Yeah. Okay. No, be proactive and raise the alert. Okay. Say, uh, and say, okay, okay, I thought this will be, uh, I, I'll be gonna fix it uh, in one day, but mm -hmm. I think it's going to take some more time. So you want to raise this alert proactively. Okay. So that is what okay. Happened. But yeah, that's true. Uh, but what happened uh, in end of the day, we realize, okay, this is not fixed. Uh, initially, I thought it, this would be fixed in this time frame. But uh, when I actually do, then it <laughs> takes too much time. See, when you say end of the day, no? so one day is like what? Eight hours? Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh, by sixth hour, Mm -hmm. You should be in a position to understand, okay, can I fix it in next two hours or not? Okay, so in, in this case, we need to just re-estimate again before yeah. uh, reaching the limit. Yeah, just raise an alert saying, okay, no, uh, it's going to take some time. It's going to take maybe uh, one more day or maybe okay. four more hours. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, proceed. You're saying something? Hi, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Okay, yeah, sorry having some microphone issues so uh, my, uh, I have one question and that is something that we are facing in our project as well so <clears throat> say for example if you have an environment uh, say for example a production environment where you don't have the exact replica of that environment and you don't have access as well now uh, even the coat and the branches are also different for for that environment so uh, and you, you don't have a lower environment desktop now, what happens? Like, how? What is the best way to debug if if uh, uh, people are reporting issues there? Because uh, we don't have the exact environmental structure as well, the database, the size of the environment, and all the other settings are different. And right. we don't have a simply have a replica, and we don't have access to it. Right, right. So for that reason, uh, what uh, usually is practice is keeping the UAT and the production in the same environment. Okay, a similar environment basically. Okay, but if that is not the case, logs are your friend. Okay, you can ask for the logs, provided you are actually logging the right way, like we discussed, right? Uh, every level of loss. You can just turn on the debug log over there and ask for the logs. Right, and, and in production, many of the times we are not able to enable all all the level of logs right so no. the reason is the reason is uh, why uh, we shouldn't enable everything on production because like we discussed there, are, there is a file io yeah so that will slow down the performance yeah. but if there, there is an issue for some time for temporary period mm -hmm. you can do it uh, understood okay so it's not like okay you turn to a debug and keep it open uh, for the lifetime mm -hmm. okay. understood i hope i answered your question yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Anything? Any queries? No? Okay. Let me ask you then. Uh, there is an issue, okay? And we are unable to find that in the PHP log. What, what all things you want to check? Uh, it's a configuration file if it is related to that uh, or uh, maybe we can uh, try to debug like uh, echoing something over there echoing something on the production uh not in production but if it is in production then also we have to do some of the id specific condition and then do the echo mm -hmm. yeah. 
not 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 a very good idea. Anything? I mean, yeah, that that could be the last. App is still. You need to check app is still. If it is not found any uh, error in page fill up, then you should go to the app is still. If okay. it is maybe accessing it to domain or so, you will find that. Okay, good. Anything else? Yeah, Deepika. If it's in our AWS, we can check CloudWatch, mm -hmm. or we can check the activity log. Right, right. Anything else? <coughs> They are missing two simple things. Very simple, very basic, and all of us know it. Error logs. Mm, error log is uh, so much it, right? Uh, but logs. Okay, if it's a system, okay, it's a product or project, whatever, okay, a web application. What all things are involved on a very surface level? Pardon? If it's a web application, okay, okay. what all things are involved at a very surface level? So you should look at the other components like database. Uh, what are the other related components that are interacting for that module? Maybe Elasticsearch, maybe database, maybe whatever. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So you start uh, if it's not in the PHP log, okay? And you have to, you know, uh, think. Okay, is it a JavaScript issue? Is it a system issue? But the first, your first friend should be uh, the browser log. Console. Okay. Console. Browser console. Uh, or if you think it's a issue with some data and you are not getting that in PHP log anywhere, okay? Mm -hmm. MySQL log is your friend. Mm -hmm. So you have to you know uh, be aware what are logs, what are systems are involved in this application, and where the logs are stored. Ultimately, it's all about logs, nothing else. Right? So if it's not PHP log, well, it, it might be uh, you know you can find the error. Anyway, anyone have any query or else we can wind up? Oh, no, I have a question in this same context. Uh, if there is no error log reported in anywhere, uh -huh. what, is the, what is the idea? We can go in the network logs. No, I, I didn't get a question. I just read. Can you please? Uh... Uh, yeah, uh, there is no uh, any error reported in either, maybe. In error PHP error log, or there is no in uh, Apache error log, there is no in MySQL error log. It's not possible. It's not possible. Okay. If yeah. there is a issue, it has to you know. Okay. Uh, we, we don't want to challenge the uh, systems like Apache Nginx and uh, AWS, right? So those systems they know how to handle error, how to log errors. No. Uh, so the times is it's gonna be our application uh, where we have. Oh, this is I'm asking. In our application, we know we, yeah. we store uh, some of the logs in Apache or maybe on the NGN apps or maybe on the cloud watch or maybe like other places. Yeah. But if yeah. the third party application, if the client's application, we and we don't aware about that. So where the law there is no logs stored, so then in the client application, okay. Let, uh, let me put it this way for example, uh, you are using a third party API and uh, you are getting an error. Mm. In, in such scenario, you can check the entry point of the API. Are you getting the right response from the API? If you're not getting the right response, okay, there's an issue with the API, and you cannot fix it because that, that's not your API, right? Mm, no. All right, so you just you know uh, escalate the issue to the uh, stakeholder. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That could possible. Yes. Yeah. Because that's that's not your system. If there is an issue with the Google API, how can you fix it? You cannot fix it. No, no. But if they allow us to just debug it. And you can try where is the law means uh, how to fix it. This is the error coming and how to troubleshoot. Uh, then you have to follow the same process: logs, breakpoints. Okay. But okay. most of the time, you should you know uh, you should be able to just uh, escalate it to the concern team, and they should be able to fix it. In most of the cases, okay. you don't need better to better to consult them. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Prithvi. Yeah, hi. Uh, so uh, I had this another question like, uh, is there any like debugging tools or uh, any any uh, plugins, anything that we can install in server or probably uh, keep monitoring, uh, which you think can be useful in debugging stuff or 
handling productivity issues uh, instead of getting into the box at the time or having access to the box something like that okay okay now coming to that uh, if you are talking about issue because of the server okay if there is a disk uh, space issue or uh, you know or the the process of you know memory overload or something for that there are you know tools of example negios is there you know other than application of, level as well yeah application so there are tools for application performance as well. Uh, I think we're using Datadog as well over here, right? Which are uh, checking uh, the uh, servers, the uh, utilization, everything, right? The process of everything. So you can use that. Uh, that is one thing. But uh, over here, the agenda of this thing is not to, you know, uh, if you want, uh, we can have another session where even I need to prepare that, what are things we have, what are tools that we can use okay? uh, for that. As of now, I don't have any proper answer, which is the best tool to use. I know there are a few tools, but uh, which is best uh, in our scenario, I don't have that answer. Sure, we'll, we'll, we'll probably have to come to a different discussion. Yeah, yeah, if you want, sure. uh, we can have another, I'll have my homework and we can have that again. Yeah, we can have it. Yeah, Yeah, for the tool perspective, uh, Clockwork is a, Good solution that can yeah. be easily integrated with our Laravel, the version that we use in Pro. And uh, uh, Clockwork, we can install the plugin for our as a package. That is the best tool that I have found because it's easy to manage, it's easy to visibility is very clear. We can get direct SQL which are running and the timing, everything we can we can check Clockwork. And another tool that I know, but that works on our graded Laravel, that's Telescope. Which one? Telescope, Laravel Telescope. Yeah. These are the two. Okay, so these are, so these are Laravel can... specific, yeah, application specific. Laravel exactly. Specific. Okay. exactly. Exactly. And okay. and this can on be Laravel. installed in servers or like, uh, or why do the local developer? You can install it on server, you know, local environment anywhere. Okay. I, I personally be... use Clockwork for all my environments suspect uh, it's a production because it, yeah for uh, production it will slow things down that is fine yeah correct uh, up to evt i personally use clockwork i have not tried telescope because uh, that does not support our version or uh, it's not uh, quite mature for laravel 5.8 i i installed that uh, but it was not uh, quite working for me that is so we'll, uh, maybe that i is. missed some configuration or something else that i have done but for the server side like server sqs s3 database you have to dig deep into that application mm -hmm. there is no other way Understood. we can exactly. do one thing i, I think we can uh, now uh, find out some tool maybe of the topic uh, we can find us a tool you can do some r and d and uh, then we can have another session where all of us would be on the same page because as of now uh, i cannot suggest any tool without doing proper research right so probably we yeah, can discuss the, that in a, yeah server side or uh, this level of uh, you you can only use atm tools like instana or new relic something like that if you just want to check logs or errors initially happen on your application one more tool I required. Uh, there is one like uh, Laravel debug bar. It's also similar yeah, to that, cloud uh, uh, where only block where. Okay. Right, that yeah, comes with that telescope, one. right? Probably. Okay. Anything else, guys? Anyone apart from tools, apart from this, uh, you know, uh, automation tool? I have a real time scenario. If you, yeah. if you are interested, I can share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the scenario is I have EBS worker. Like in our Frost application, we have usually two web servers and one EBS worker, right? That is the architecture that we follow. In EBS worker, we use a Laravel scheduler that uh, runs a cron job or import export uh, kind of features on every one minute the problem here is uh, recently we have altered database password for qa application okay 
and the EBS worker is running fine. Even the import export is also running fine. But problem is on every minute when it uh, triggers the import or export feature, it raises an alert that or the error it throws that the access denied. That is crossed master is our username. Username has at the rate host IP has access denied and the uh, SQL will get rendered in the error log. So it's very difficult for me. Even the feature is working. Import export is working fine. But I okay. am really not getting why this error is coming over and over. Probably we can sit together and we can uh, find yep. it. Yeah, so I think that's the one scenario if you have, I'm not sure if you have checked or not, like <laughs> you can check that. So like uh, uh, that worker, the EBS worker, like uh, did you uh, restart the services or uh, reload the uh, configuration? Like for, for sometimes like we have experienced that from that other cache, uh, this kind of more inconsistent things happen. So like, did you try that on the worker server? Like clearing cache, oh. reloading things and stuff like that. After changing the database url uh, i mean the database the configurations configuration yeah yeah so you